What's a restrictive covenant? First, let's clear up what a covenant is. A covenant is basically an agreement. It's pretty simple, right? Now, a restrictive covenant is a promise that one party to a contract makes to the other party that somehow restricts the party who is making the promise from doing something. For example, let's say there's a software company who has an amazing idea for a new computer program. They run into an engineer who is able to build it, but they want to ensure that he won't steal some of the technology. The software company would want to use a restrictive covenant which basically restricts the engineer from using their information in the future. The details of restrictive covenants will vary greatly depending on the specifics of each situation. Some agreements may be basic, while others will call for a more detailed arrangement. And with these types of agreements, it's even more imperative that you don't take a one-size-fits-all approach. Keep it simple when appropriate, but also be sure to include necessary terms that may not apply to all circumstances. There are three basic types of restrictive covenants used in employment agreements. First, a non-disclosure agreement, or NDA. An NDA is used to protect the valuable trade secrets of a business. So, as the name suggests, it restricts communication when these restrictions are necessary to protect the business from competitors. By law, a non-disclosure contract must be reasonable and necessary for protecting a legitimate business interest. So in theory, an NDA could exist indefinitely, and if this is the case, the agreement must clearly state that fact. Second, a non-compete agreement is also used to prevent someone from leaving their employment and directly competing with their former employer. These types of agreements restrict the activities of the person who is agreeing not to compete. They must be carefully drafted as harsh restrictions are often frowned upon by the courts and are prohibited in some states altogether. In Florida, if the non-compete is limited in scope, duration, and location, it protects an actual and legitimate business interest of the employer. And if other relevant factors are met depending on the circumstances, then these types of agreements are likely to be enforced. Finally, a non-solicitation agreement is used when the employer wants to stop someone from soliciting the employees, customers, affiliates, or other third parties engaged in business with the employer. These types of agreements can restrict the marketing, hiring, or cold calling practices of the former employee in order to prevent poaching or unfair competition. As such, these types of agreements are often broken down into two categories, one that covers the solicitation of customers and another that covers the recruitment of former employees for a competing business. Depending on the state in which you're located, many restrictive covenants are legally binding, but the courts provide us with several examples of terms that are routinely held unenforceable. One important question to always ask is if the value of what is given up by the person agreeing to the restriction is relatively equal to the benefits that the person is receiving by entering into the agreement. For example, a handsomely paid executive could rightfully be asked to give up much more than an entry-level employee, and your agreements should carefully reflect this. As always, I hope this helps.